southern Indiana, home of crops, coal, and countryside. And above it all, basketball. First played in Crawfordsville in 1896, the game grew almost overnight into the state's passion. As a state built around agriculture, basketball was the perfect game for Indiana. It was played indoors during the cold winters. It never interfered with harvest or planting season, and it was easy to field a team. Even the smallest schools could scratch together a five-man lineup. And from these beginnings, basketball quickly spread across the state, from small town to small town, each separated only by the farmland between them. Then came the legends. Legends like Tiny Milan High School defeating the powerhouse Muncie Central, a story forever immortalized, serving as inspiration for the movie Hoosiers. Or the legend of Crispus Attucks High School, the first all African American team to win a state championship in the nation's history. Names like Knight. Katie. Technical on Gene Katie. Gene Katie picks up a technical foul. Bird. Larry Bird. Oh, what a shot he ever missed. Robertson. Decorate Indiana's history to this day. And it's where something as simple as a singing maid named Martha stirs the emotions of thousands. Much of that history is still felt on the maple floors and in the field houses of schools across the state, where many games feel like they could have taken place 50 years ago. And for the tiny town of Montgomery, in the heart of Davies County, the Vikings of Bar Reeve are the only game in town. Vikings are led by head coach Brian Hughes. Now set to begin his 23rd year at Bar Reeve, Coach Hughes enters the new season with 497 wins and is quickly rising among the ranks of Indiana's most successful coaches. I'm from Covington, Indiana. From Covington, I went on and played uh, college basketball at Indiana Central, which is now the University of Indianapolis, and I uh, played four years there on scholarship. And from there on, uh, I've been coaching basketball at North Vermilion High School up in Cuyahoga, Indiana. I went on from there to Fountain Central High School. And then the job at Bar Reeve came open. And at the time, it was athletic director slash varsity basketball coach and didn't really know anything about Bar Reeve. I knew when I showed up at the superintendent's office, which is right across the street from the fire station, that there was about four vehicles there and people sitting out on our car. It was a Saturday morning because I guess the word had got out that the new basketball coach was coming to town. So it was kind of like the movie Hoosiers and, uh, uh, and I've been here ever since. Today's practice marks the official beginning of the new season. One that follows arguably the greatest season in Vikings history when they earned a 26 and two record and remained the number one team in the state the entire season. It also marked the fourth opportunity for the Vikings to win their first ever state championship. 
The 104th time we've contested a boys basketball state championship in Indiana. Our 1A state championship game between the Vikings of Bar Reeb and the Blazers of Marquette Catholic. These are two teams that have not lost a game to 1A competition in the state of Indiana this season. The contrasting storyline coming into today's game. Marquette Catholic, the new kids on the block. Their coach, Donna McGarlett, says this was not even a stated goal to reach it to this game today. Meanwhile, Brian Hughes has the Barry Vikings here for the fourth time. He's called this a magical season as they've been ranked number one in 1A all year. They are prepared for the game of their lives. Number one versus number three, battling for that state championship crown. The type of talent that the Blazers possess, Ryan Fizikas. Fizikas is a 6'8 junior, is a Providence verbal commitment. Providence, of course, a Big East school, so high-level Division I talent on this team. Well, looking back at the 2014 championship, uh, it was obviously a game of runs. They got to run, we got to run. Fizikas, five-footer, rattles in and good. Long three going to be put up by Fizikas, and they just lost it. Fizikas going to fire, and yet another three knocks in another one. Zekas another three, got it again. We gotta find him. 17-9, Marquette leads by eight. It was back and forth most of the game. We got down and then we made a run. They go on a 10 run, we go on a 10 run. Addison Wagler, spins, goes through everybody, lays it up and in. Yeah. Like a bull lock. He's gonna go down the lane, lay up, got it. And we are tied at 23. Mike on the right side. Mike is gonna fire a three. Boom, yeah, baby! Vikings with their first lead. 26-23, ball read by three now. Minute and a half left, second quarter. Gotta stay with Fazekas here, he's gonna find one. Fazekas fires a three. It's good for the love of God. 26 all. First half was the Ryan Fazekas show with 19 big points for Marquette. Going into the third quarter, it was a tight ball game. We came out, we, we knew we didn't have anything to lose. We were ready to go. Here come the Blazers again, running it up the floor. Fizikas fires another ah, three. Dang. And how can you lose him? Long three put up yeah, again. Shooting the rock, man. Braxton Miller knocks in a three. Fizikas going to go down, lays it up. Yeah, Ten quickly they run. Marquette lead, and they are trying to throw a big blow here. And let's see how Bar Eve answers. As the game went on, we started to pick it up. Third quarter, we jumped on him. Four threes, all back to back. Duncan Roy has it over to Whitmer. Chris going to fire a three. Got it. Away, Chris. Micah going to set for a long three. Got it. 38-32. Whitmer with another three. They're going to leave him open. Yeah. Whitmer got it again. Yeah. And it's 38-37. The Vikings have cut this 10-point lead to one. Fazekas going to fire a quick three. Holy cow, he missed. Addison Wagner with the rebound. Here comes Logan James. The Vikings can take the lead. Gets it over. Micah going to fire. Hey. 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 The Vikings got a two-point lead. It was like the greatest moment of my life, I believe. Micah had a three for a second. He's going to go down the lane. Lays it up. Addison Wagner. And the Vikings go into the fourth quarter with a seven-point lead. Ball Reed, eight minutes away from potentially their first state championship in the history of the school. Going into the fourth quarter, we found ourselves up six or seven points. When we have a lead in the fourth quarter, we usually win the basketball game. We were up ten with four and a half minutes to go. And they went on the last run. Marquette trails by 10. Three put up by Fizikas. Got it. Uh, and here comes Marquette with it. Fizikas shot. Good. And the three put up by Malcolm Reed. Knocks it in. And it's a two-point lead. Over in the corner. Long three put up by Bless America. Devontae Shots being made. Ties it at 60. I think over time, their pressure started to wear on us a little bit. We had some untimely turnovers. We had a chance to win it in regulation. Here comes Logan with it. We're at 10 seconds. Duncan Roy's got it on the right wing. I threw it out of bounds. It's a cutting Micah Bullock. Damn it. And ball's out of bounds. Five seconds left. And Marquette will have it. We could have got a time out there to set something up. Just look like we had numbers. Just a little bit out of reach. You know, I suck and guess myself. We didn't call timeout. Looking back upon it, yeah, I wish I'd have called timeout. The thing about calling timeout there, you, then you got to get the ball in bounds. And uh, they, they, were, they were a very good defensive team that would have put a lot of pressure on us. And um, it, it just didn't work out for us this time. And then in overtime, they hit a couple shots that you wouldn't expect. And that was about it. They just played better than we did. We just let it slip away. Fazek is going to fire a 17 uh, footer. Got it. Addison with it on the baseline, working on everybody. Just going to spin. And no call, wow. no call right there. And here comes Marquette with the basketball. Layup good by Braxton Miller. And the 10 seconds left. Logan James going to fire a three. It's going to be no good. Marquette with the basketball. That's pretty much going to do it.
the Vikings in their fourth trip to Bankers Life Fieldhouse fall in overtime here, 70-66. To give that lead up and to see you know, a couple of our players make plays that I know will stay with them for a long time, um, boy, that was hard to take. And, you know, I sit there as a head coach, and after the game, you know, it's like, did I give our players a chance to win? After we lost, I'm sitting in the locker room, and all I can think about is I'm 0-4. Yeah, happy and gratified and know that there's a lot of coaches in the state of Indiana that would love to, to get there once. But I've been here four times and I've came up short. And uh, well, that's tough to take. It was a tough locker room after the game. It was a tough bus ride home. It was a tough spring. But then it's time to forget about that and um, regroup with this team that we got coming in this year and go on and see how good we can be this year. And I know people are expecting a lot, but I'm expecting a lot, and our players expect a lot. And just personally, from a coaching standpoint, just having another opportunity to get there and to play in Banker's life, and then to see it slip away like it did, um, boy, it was a sick feeling. And I just hope, whether it's this year or years to come, that we get that opportunity to get back here and take advantage of it, because I just feel like uh, we let one slide away. I never did have a good feeling in that game. Yeah, everybody was just nervous getting ready to go play because it's something we never done before. And we didn't really know. And they just got a huge run. When you get a team like that that gets on a run, then they don't stop. Bugs are bad. All right, give them a okay. They would be up ten. We'd go, we'd go up ten. Yeah, because they were up. They were up ten most. They were up most of the game. Was, yeah, I would then say we got up ten. With at Dalt. one point in time, I thought they were gonna. I would say it was a, a game we, of runs. Right? Yo, yeah. we went on that run, start the, start the fourth quarter, and we just couldn't hold on to it. I don't know. I guess we should have shouldn't have been in that position. We could have won. Yeah. They just had some guys that usually you don't make hot. shots, hit shots. Yeah, they can get yeah, hot real quick. It sucks for the seniors, but I know next year we can do the same thing. Win even. Confidence was pretty high though. Even after we lost, because I knew we had a good team coming back. Well, talking about this year's personnel, we probably need to start with our two captains. Addison Wagler has been a three-year starter for us, probably the strongest kid that I've ever had an opportunity to coach. And the majority of our sets and our offense goes to him, and it's not going to be any different this year. Our other captain is our point guard, Logan James, and he's a kid that you want on the floor and a great ball handler, a very smart kid, and he, he gets us in all of our sets and all of our offenses. One of our other starters this year will be Duncan Roy. I think he's just really gonna come in big for us this year because he has skill, he has athletic ability, he's got good height, and he's gonna be a big key for us this year. Chris Whitmer's a player, uh, and I just love how he plays. Every night in practice, just busts his tail off. He's our best defender on the ball. Just his presence, his quickness, his toughness will bring a lot to the table for us this year. Seth Swartzen Trooper's a kid that has the ability to shoot the three. He's very athletic, and a part of our success this year will be the play of Seth Swartzen Trooper. Another player that we'll see court time is Ethan Dungeon. Ethan's play off the bench is going to make us better, and there's probably going to be a lot of games that he'll be on the floor, and he'll be a main part of our success. Connor Swartzen Trooper, without hesitation, we could take half the teams we play and Connor would be a starter for them. We'll bring him into the basketball game and he'll do well for us. Matt Stahl is a tremendous asset to have on the team and in the locker room. He's always positive, but Matt will provide tremendous leadership for a basketball team. Last senior on the squad is a Drew Fields, and you know Drew probably won't get a lot of court time, but he's a great kid. He's stayed with the program, so Drew will be a part of it, and he'll go through everything that everyone else will go through. Today, the Vikings run through their final practice before the season's first game, the Thanksgiving Eve contest against the neighboring Washington Hatchets. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
we open up, time is going to fly, and the schedule is going to, it's really going to go quick. Okay, so you know, especially seniors, you got to take advantage of it. Don't overlook anything. We have to be the better team tomorrow night. Uh, we're ready to go. Um, re really happy with. Um, I just think these guys have been working really hard, and uh, we're playing a pretty good team though tomorrow too. So we'll 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 see what happens. But uh, this is always kind of a fun game because it's our both communities are so close to each other, and we're not like hated rivals. Um, so. You know, we'll see, see what happens. Welcome to the Hatchet House. And it is varsity basketball game number one on the season for both of these squads, the Bari Vikings and the Washington Hatchets. We'd always look forward to this night. You look around, there's just so many people here at this game. They just want to come see a good basketball game. The Vikings coached by Brian Hughes. Coach Hughes rapidly closing in on 500 wins. He sits at 497. Of course, Coach Miller, you want to talk about one of the best in the business. There's almost 1,200 wins between the coaches on the sidelines tonight. Gets up, controlled in the backcourt by Logan James. In the first game of what they hope will be a championship season, the Vikings come out ice cold. Over to Seth, Seth goes down the lane, scoops it up, shot no good. And quickly down on the other end, Logan James, his contested layup, no good. Madison, four-foot hook shot, no good. Duncan kicks it off. Seth Swartz's trooper going to fire a three. It's long. Hit Bedwell cutting to the post. Addison's going to foul him. Ball's going to be on the floor. We're going to have it tie up. So, cold start here in the early going from the Vikings. The Hatchets take advantage of Bar Reeves' cold start. There's a long two put up by Matt Stevens. It's good. Three is no good. Tapped around. No good. And there's Bedwell. Picks it back up and lays it in. And I tell you what, Barney's had some problems on the boards there in the early going. The Vikings settle down in the second half behind the play of senior captain Addison Wagler. Addison's got it. Put a spin on everybody. Lay it up and in. Addison on the baseline. Lays it up. Got it. Addison over to Duncan. Duncan going to set for three. Knocks it in. Big three there. Now that's a triple team. Addison just spins through everybody, lays it up, and got it. Steph has it now. Logan James fires a three, got it. 53-48, and that's going to be it. A hard-fought battle. The Vikings win it by five tonight. Barry 53, Washington 48. There's a lot of things I didn't like, but the one big thing that I did like is our toughness at the end. We did not play as well as we're capable of playing. But you kept fighting, and that's what's important. I don't know about you, but that turkey and dressing is going to taste a hell of a lot better tomorrow than what it would have if we were in here talking about a loss. Everybody up. Early 1700s, French Catholics became the first Europeans to enter the region now known as Indiana. Fur traders utilized the Wabash River as the quickest connecting route between new French territories, Canada and Louisiana. With them, they brought names like Terre Haute, Vincennes, Montgomery, French Lick, and Versailles. Later that century, the British entered the area, seeking to drive the French out and bringing their own Catholic influence. Still seen today in towns such as Ireland, once home to the proud spuds of Ireland High School, Scotland, once home to the Scotties, and the world-famous Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. It's a legacy that endures to this day. The first thing seen upon approaching Montgomery is the Golden Dome Bell Tower of St. Peter Catholic Church. The church resides under the watchful eye of Father Jim Caressel. I tell the people here that we have a treasure. It's like a little museum. This church was completed in 1869. The windows and the stations that adorn the walls, they were all brought over from Italy in 1895. But much of what is here is original, we think, like the pews, for instance. 
If you run your hand against the backs, you will feel that they aren't exactly true. They got little bumps on them, and we've done a lot of work around the place in a physical sense. And the next big project is going to be to have our dome and our cross gilded, and I would love to be able to see that shining in the bright sun some morning. And you know, the history of that golden dome is that way back when, the founder of Notre Dame University, Father Soren, was the pastor here. He wanted to start the University of Notre Dame here. And he and the bishop of the time, Bishop Hollandier, a Frenchman, I guess got into a little bit of a spat. And Bishop Hollandier said, Father Soren, we've already got a nice Catholic college at Vincennes. I think you ought to go up north and found your college because there's not room for two of them here. So he did, he went up to South Bend. Now whether Notre Dame would have developed in the way that it has if it had been here is questionable, but uh, that's part of the Golden Dome thing. In addition to the French and Irish Catholic influence, in the 1800s, Indiana also saw the arrival of another group of religious believers, the Amish and Mennonite. What truly makes Bar Reeve unique is that it resides in one of the largest Amish and Mennonite settlements in the country. I got the job, you know, I really didn't know if the Amish played basketball. I didn't really know at the time what a Mennonite was. And I remember my first open gym, we came in and we had a kid in here with long pants on who within about five or 10 minutes of playing up and down the floor went up and dunked one. And I remember asking to one of the assistants, I said, you know, who, who is that? And they told me the kid's name, but they said he doesn't play because his, he's Amish and they won't let him play. And I've been out to the local gym out here, Donut Hill, and seen kids in long pants, and they can flat out play basketball. Of course, being competitive as I am, I'm gonna find a way for these kids to play. I never got it accomplished, and there's a lot of things till this day that I don't understand totally, but they can flat out play basketball. I was raised Amish, I was actually Amish till I was six. Then we converted to Mennonite just before I went to school, really. So we've been Mennonite ever since. But my grandparents on both sides were Amish. Uh, my dad's side, there was 10 brothers and sisters, I think. My mom's, there was nine. My dad's side are completely all Amish, besides maybe two uncles that converted to Mennonite. And then my mom's side, they all grew up Amish also, but they all converted to Mennonite. I'm not even quite sure. I think it's around 70 first cousins on my dad's side. And my mom's side is about 40, so I could be getting close to 50. But going through school, I was I was still expected just to drop out of eighth grade, like most Amish people are still do, and help with my dad's uh, construction career because he owns a crew. And that's usually how it works around here, and that's what I was going through school thinking I was going to do. I grew up out or Amish till I was about three four and then we switched and we went to less conservative Mennonite church and just grew up always around my family and usually had something to do with basketball but not always I have a lot of cousins of my mom's side my dad has his side's not very big but my mom's side has over 30 grandchildren you know driving a buggy driving a car biggest difference I do remember those long rides to grandma and Epps. I still drive a horse and buggy every now and then. My grandpa's, he loves me borrow his every now and then. Let me ask you, go to the Mennonite church and my grandparents are both still Amish. Yeah, my grandpa, a lot of people call him Lenny. Yeah, he's, he's in his 60s, he's a hard working guy. Him and my grandma, they had 12 kids. I know it must have been hard and they really did a good job raising all. I see him a lot, he goes to Florida now a lot in the winter because that's a lot nicer in Florida in the winter and here in Indiana. And, 
In the summertime, when I'm here helping him out, head to crew, he's, he's here a lot, still working. He don't do as much as he used to, obviously. What I do is I'm trying to make it easier for him and just get paid, I guess. My dad grew up Amish until he's about high school. He kind of got more Mennonite. And then he met my mom, who was actually from the rival school, the Goatee. She was a basketball player over there. She actually held a few records for a while, so I usually get jostled back and forth for why I didn't go to the Goatee and why I'm at Bar Eve. On my dad's side, he's got nine siblings. And I asked him the other day how many cousins I had, and he said, it's probably upwards of 50 or 60. And uh, unfortunately, my grandma, the only one left, is in her last week of living. She's on cancer. And uh, her last dying wish was to see us win state finals. I don't think she's going to make it there, but that's kind of what's pushing me to do my best to get there. Coming into the job early on, I had never been around Amish Mennonite, I didn't know anything about them, but learned really quick how good of people they are and how hard of workers they are. coach that the toughness factor or this how hard the kids practice and how hard they work definitely these kids work harder and play harder one of the reasons I've been here this long is I just appreciate the fact that you know they give me everything and more that I could ask for uh, you hear coaches complain all the time about the summertime. They can't get their guys to come in. And, you know, I can speak up proudly and tell them that, you know what, I got a lot of Mennonite kids on my team that work construction all summer. And then at 6 o'clock, they're in the gym for two hours, and they never miss. And it's just uh, really amazing to some other coaches that the kids have that, that good of a work ethic. Director back here. Right back. So we're headed down to USI today. 
Uh, we're actually on the Lloyd right now, and I'm going down to meet my advisors. I've been fortunate enough to get an interview for the presidential scholarship. If I do get that, then that will be a definite plus, and that'll help out a lot financially. We're actually not too far from Bossy, where we played uh, Altoff Catholic. The Altoff loss was an ugly game. So after any loss, Hughes always draws a line on the board, and then he always says, we never get too high when we win. You never get too low when you lose. You know, take what you've learned from that loss and actually apply it. My mom is from Dubois County, a very old German Catholic family on that side. And then my dad's side was Irish Catholic. I don't have any Amish ancestors or anything like that. That's never been a, like an issue in Montgomery. Nobody really cares where you're from, you know, be an odd man out. It's never been a problem chemistry wise. It's never been a problem like friend wise. There's no prejudice. The area is highly Amish, but it's a very nurturing and supportive environment to grow up in. The other day, uh, when we go to beat Bar Eve in uh, volleyball, seventh day grade tourney, they went back and got on the fire truck and had a parade because they beat Bar Eve in the seventh and eighth grade, and it wasn't even sectional or nothing. So that's how big sports is here. I mean, that was the whole deal right there, the Goldie and Bar Eve. Yeah. yeah, looking back at the times when Bud and I played, it was a struggle. I yeah. think we won three games in two years. Yeah. <laughs> 76, there's always somebody getting hurt. Yeah. John Cavanaugh tried to jump over a yeah. card and broke his leg. <laughs> It was like a jinx. Every year we had a team that was caliber of winning it all. Couldn't get out of the section because of our goalie. Yeah, well, you know, 1987, you know, was a big one. We had to win our first sectional. We'd been trying and trying, finally broke through and beat the goalie a couple of times. And then Brian Hughes came in here and he just took it to another level. And the feeder system we have up here is just second to none, you know. Of course, Albert Cavanaugh has been working on there for It starts when they're in third, year, fourth yeah, grade. Yeah, third, fourth grade. They've put in so much time up there. Get those kids in and knowing the fundamentals of basketball. I'm uh, Albert Cavanaugh. I guess Charles Albert Cavanaugh is the uh, full name. But uh, I've been here at Bar Reeve now, uh, going on my 50, 50, 56th year. And uh, working at this level with Bar Reeve Basketball Program, uh, we've been accessible. 40 years. I came to what was Montgomery High School in the fall of 1962, teaching social studies and related classes. I became a freshman coach and we just simply felt that there was a need for a program at the lower levels. We had teams, but we didn't have a program. I'm not so much the game coach as is just the person who tries to uh, make sure the balls are there and that uh, everything's covered. In addition to being the voice of Viking home games, in 2009, Albert received the ultimate recognition when the school named its basketball court in his honor. I had absolutely no idea there was any plans or scheming to do this. They came in that summer and put it on the floor. Albert is Bar Reeves. The reason his name is on the court is because everyone realizes what he's done for this school. He's put in 40 some years here and he is responsible for our little guys and our elementary program and the organization there. And you know, I'll come in here on Saturday morning and the gym will be full. And they want to be a Viking one of these days. They want to be a varsity player. And when Albert's not here anymore, there will not be one man that will be able to take up what he's done. It'll be a combination of a lot of people. You know, I just hope to live to see a state championship. I think this is probably our best chance with the combination of Addison, Duncan Roy, and of the supporting cast. And uh, you gotta have a certain amount of luck. Health-wise, you know, all kinds of crazy things can happen. Bar Reeves' next matchup comes against local rival North Davies. With both schools making their home inside Davies County, they draw from the same pool of Amish Mennonite. Locals call the game the Buggy Bowl. 
I never will forget my first buggy bowl. I know they called it a buggy bowl, but I didn't know what to expect until I showed up to school on that Monday morning and, you know, there was about 10 buggies parked outside and then I kind of understood what the buggy bowl was. And I think back then, the kids would actually go out and steal buggies and bring them in. I think nowadays, there may be a little bit more permission granted. I've seen them everywhere. There's been buggies on top of our school. There's been buggies at midcourt here in this gym. When I walked in school, one year there was a buggy in the library and they'd taken all the books and put it in the buggy. Needless to say, that senior class got in a little trouble. Well, there has been established trophies between Bar Reeve and North Davis. And whichever team wins, of course, it's from year to year, rotates, or, of course, we've had it now for a few years, and hope to keep it, bring it back with us tonight. Welcome to North Davies High School, the Cougar Den, where tonight it is the 2015 version of the Buggy Bowl. It is coaches versus cancer night, and both teams wearing the matching Stand Up to Cancer shirts tonight. And of course, the Cougars coached by Brent Dalrymple and assisted by John Moker. With North Davies starting three sophomores, Bar Reeve gets out to a quick start. Bar Reeve with the opening possession. Addison working on Kyle Kane, going to spin on the baseline. Knocked in about an eight-footer. Duncan Roy going to set for a three, got it. Whitmer down the lane, his floater got it. And now Bar Reeve seemingly taking control here. It's exactly the start Coach Hughes wanted to see his guys get. Wagler going to fire a three from the corner. It's going to be long. Zach Moore grabs the offensive rebound and lays it in. Monica trying to turn the corner, fires an off-balance three. He's going to bank it in just ahead of the horn. Oh, Zone one possession, lob play. Duncan Roy lays it in. The Vikings are too strong for the young Cougar team. North Davies down the lane. Ball's going to be picked away, and they're going to get a travel. They're trying to make a move to the bucket. Oh my. Three consecutive turnovers. The turnovers just killing North Davies' chance. Coach Dalrymple urges his players on, knowing a rematch with the Vikings could come in the section. Addison with another steal. This may be a dunk, Coach Ash. Side's gonna lay it in. <laughs> oh, I wanted him to smack it. The final, Bari retains the buggy bowl. They defeat North Davies tonight here in the Cougar Den, 48 to 22. Right now, we're on our way to the barn. It's out in Amish countries where we go and play a pickup ball, but it's not traditional basketball. It's a, more of a rough neck. First one not to get injured wins. <laughs> Usually how it ends up going. I don't know who built this place, but it is architectural perfection. effect, particularly of the Old Order Amish, I think, plays a big part in what makes this community different because it's slow-paced. 
they have to plan ahead with their horse and buggy to get where they want to go. And I hear the clip-clop, clip-clop sometimes at 5.30 in the morning when I'm out retrieving my daily paper. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not the only one up early today. And their slow pace, I think, has transferred to the overall pace of this community. Other things about the community that sets it aside from other places I've been is that I think parents are the parents and children are the children. I see that reversed in some areas of society that the children tell the parents what's gonna happen rather than the opposite. And I think that's why we have such a wonderful community because the parents are strong, they are faith-based, the Mennonites, the Amish, Catholics that inhabit the community. But I think all of us agree. We go to church on Sunday and we live by the, the law of the Lord rather than even sometimes the law of the land because the law of the Lord, we believe, supersedes sometimes the law of the land. Religion is important to this community. And I've always told our team that religion and their family are the number one thing that should be a priority. Uh, the next thing is their grades, and then comes basketball. And we want them to go in that order. And where else can you come to a varsity basketball game and right before the, the national anthem, we actually have a guest minister or pastor that says prayer over the PA. And we, we have a prayer here before every basketball game. You know, and you hear people stopping prayer and not being able to have it and all the craziness that's going on in the world today. And here we sit in this little community and that's why it's so special. And we want our kids to understand that. I appreciate having the opportunity to lead prayer before the girls and the boys basketball games. I take my turn along with other ministers from the area. It's a prayer for our nation, a prayer for the military, and we ask God's blessing on all the families and pray that nobody gets hurt during the game. And we even pray for the referees, believe it or not. But visiting teams and parents that come with visiting teams will oftentimes single me and I'm sure other ministers out to say, that is really so nice. That's wonderful that you have a little prayer before the game. And it's like less than 60 seconds usually. And they wonder how we keep doing it and we'll chase it as long as we can. This morning, the Vikings meet for breakfast, a long-standing tradition on the day of home games. Tonight, they'll square off against Evansville Harrison, a high energy team ranked in the top 10 of 4A. Okay, gather a seat, get everybody in here. Okay, no, nothing's changing, okay? Nothing's changing up here on the board. Win or lose, you need to understand this is a game to make you better. But it is a game that we can win. You've got a great environment out there. People are ready to explode with some noise. They want to see you play. They want to see you give the effort and toughness. Okay? Composure, keep your head in it. One play is not going to make or break. You've got to keep playing the game. The energy factor should not be a factor tonight. I shouldn't even have to discuss number one. Defensive toughness every possession. Whether, well, I don't care what we're in, we got to just make sure they earn everything. Box out and rebound. All five positions, you got to go rebound. Handle pressure, share the ball, and attack. Number six, have some fun. There's a lot of guys go through the four years playing high school basketball that don't get an opportunity what you've got tonight. You have a packed gymnasium, you're on your home floor, and you got a 4A school coming in here, and you got a chance to knock their ass off. If you're not jacked to play this game, you never will be. This is number 16. We're going after win 16. We're not just here to, to play the game. We're going after win 16. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get ready to go here. Marty, one, two, three. Marty. Marty. The guys never miss a chance to joke at their coach's expense. <laughs> no, but that, I got to handle it right here. <laughs> That's not last. That should come first. What about, what about attack? 
Well, we can attack off their press. Should we, right? should, should we attack the really match or just should we not there? Should, <laughs> should, 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 should we not attack at all? It's soft attack. How about attack. we just don't attack at all? <laughs> 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 Alright, so we're going to have to Good evening, everybody. It is homecoming at Cavanaugh Court, where tonight the 15 and 2 Bar Reeves Vikings welcome possibly the first 4A opponent ever here at Cavanaugh Court, the Evansville Harrison Warriors. I'm Mike DeGorsi, alongside Barry Principal Jeff Doyle. And this is what Indiana High School basketball is all about tonight. This place is absolutely electric and hopping. So Harrison comes in here tonight, a preseason top 10 team in, in, in 4A. They can, and I tell you, a lot of buzz about this game. Absolutely. It's been a game that we've circled on our calendar for a long time. The place is back. The crowd's really into it. Fans going at it. Every possession matters. It's a great matchup. Good chance to see where Bar Reef is at this time of the season. Holy cow, look out tonight, folks. Students are standing. Tip's going to be up, and it is controlled by Evansville Harrison. Ball Reeve takes charge early. Addison Wagler with the layup. He got it. Logan's going to fire a three. It's going to be long, but there's Addison with the rebound, and he's just going to fight through everybody, lay it up and in. Four nothing, Ball Reeve. Chris Whitmer down to Addison Wagler. Addison off the glass and in, and he's going to be fouled and go to the line looking to complete the three-point play. Harrison immediately fights back. Here come the Warriors quickly up the floor. Streaking layup by Stanley Duncan. Jackson Strong with it. He's going to fire a three. Got it. That's Christian Cunningham now with it. Goes down the lane. His layup is good. And this start is everything we thought it was going to be. We got a guard. We got to get stopped. We got to get steals. 2 2 1, full court pressure right here. Seth Swartz the Trooper in the corner. Three on the way. Yeah! Vikings by six again. And there comes Duncan Roy down the lane. His shot off the glass, good. Schaefer gonna fire a three, got it. Steph's gonna fire another three from the corner and got this one. And at halftime, Bar Reed leads Evansville Harrison 30 to 26. Okay, listen, good half. We gotta take care of the basketball. And I told you that you're, you're, you're gonna get pressure. You're getting pressure like you don't get it in most games on our schedule. And we got to handle it. The thing you cannot do is play tentative. You got to be on the attack mode. A couple times there, Addison, I, you know, I'm yelling at you because you, you know, they come, here they come at you, and you just back it off and take a charge. Just one, freaking one for me. I mean, it's just stepping over there and being vertical and, and, and letting them ram into you. We have to protect the lane area. Any questions there? Win the game. Go win the game. They may make a little run. That's where composure comes into play here. It's just got to show a little toughness here tonight. Harrison with the basketball starting the second half. Two three zone by the Vikings. Everett Duncan with a three from the corner. Got it. 30 to 29. Duncan Roy going to set for a three. Got this one again. Strong going to go down the lane. Layup. Got it. Then defense takes over. Whitmer going to stop and pop, 15-footer, no good. Mari is going to pick off another pass. Nice job by Whitmer there on defense. Addison going to rip through on the baseline. Layup, no good. And Addison Wagler does just as instructed. And they're going to get an offensive foul. Addison Wagler, that was a great take right there. Addison saw the whole thing unfolding. And Coach Spear wants a timeout. We're not going to hit a 10-point shot. You're going to have to chip quick, bit by bit. We come back, Carmel. Make sure you get the ball where it should get. High low set down to Duncan Roy. Duncan Guys, Wagler. Guys, low. Got Great it. Hand. Great pass by Anderson Wagler. Nice play by Duncan Roy. Chris Whitmer's got it out high. He's going to make a move to the bucket. His layup, got it. Nice move by Chris. Duncan's going to try to turn the corner. And add another charge as Stanley Duncan going to run over Addison Wagler. Addison's going to stand in and take it. Go 
Hogan going to fire a three. Yeah! The Vikings with their biggest lead of the game. Addison grabs the rebound, lays it in. And Harrison's frustration has mounted right here. Harrison perilously close to getting a technical foul. Nice bounce pass by Seth. And one, yeah! Logan James back to Duncan Roy, layup, got it. Viking fans on their feet, what an effort. I can lose. Stop on hard all the time! The Vikings are gonna clinch it tonight, and what a monumental win here at Kavanaugh Court. Maurice improves to 16 and two. They knock off Evansville Harrison tonight, 68 to 52. Very good effort. Toughness is what you brought. And there's games on our schedule left. And there's games at the end of the schedule that you have to bring the toughness. But it, let's keep everything in perspective. This is one game that we're not way up here. You can enjoy it. You know, we'll enjoy it tonight. We'll enjoy it tomorrow. <coughs> then it's right back to business again next week at Jasper. I told you those three segment games Harrison, Jasper, and South Knox is probably the three toughest on the schedule. And you just knocked off the first one. Everybody up. Let's go. basketball game tonight here at Jasper High School. This may be, uh, of the entire year, the most difficult contest as far as the atmosphere and it being homecoming. There's a lot of things stacked against Far East tonight. The Vikings quickly find out this will be one of their most physical games all year. And the Vikings defense has not been on point here in the early going. And they're going to tackle Chris Whitmer. Austin Allen's going to be called with an offensive foul. The Vikings unable to get any offense going from the perimeter. And that's going to be a blocking foul. And I take you what, the Jasper faithful not happy as you can hear. Whitmer going to step in, fire three, knock it in. The Vikings have set this lead to two. Addison Wagler got a hit on the arm, but he knocks it in anyway. Logan James going to fire a three. It's going to be long. Addison grabs the rebound, goes through everybody, lays it up and lays it in. We've got a scrum with it. The coach Hughes is not happy. Allen with it down in the post. Nottingham going to fire a three. Got it.
Duncan Roy in the corner. And they're going to foul Duncan Roy. Oh, good grief. They're going to call a double foul. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. No, no, no. God bless America. Whitmer bounce pass. Addison Wagler lay up good. Shot going to be short. Addison with the rebound. And here come the Vikings. Duncan Roy. And he's going to be hammered. Duncan was going up to dunk the basketball. And Duncan Roy is down. The Maries with a big time victory here tonight but the mark of any great team and hopefully what will become a championship team this year for the vikings is that they bend but they will not break Barry wins it tonight they knock off jasper 62 59. all right first of all positives we came out after halftime got a little tougher we started making plays start getting in the rhythm a little bit we start playing a lot better defense It's been very easy to lose our temper and have things happen, and then when things happen, then the game just gets away from you. Okay? We didn't do that. So I'm proud of you from that standpoint. Addison, nice ball game. One win. That's all it is. It's one win. That's a good one, though. Good job. Barry, one, two, three. Barry. In some of your bigger schools around the city, you have malls to go to and so much for kids to do. And, you know, here athletics are very important. So when the volleyball and girls basketball team's playing, you'll see my entire basketball team over getting rowdy for the volleyball team. When we play, you know, it'll be the volleyball and girls basketball team. So everybody kind of pulls for everybody else. We're definitely blessed growing up in this community. Coming to school, there's just no worries about anything. It's just laid back. Everybody works hard. Everybody works for the same goal. In a big city, something can happen to you and thousands of people couldn't hear about it. If something happens to you here, there's always someone there to come help. Usually hundreds of people to come help you. The love and outpouring that people show is just, you don't get that in other places in the world. Everybody's got everybody's back. If something comes up, somebody's already there for you. Well, I went from a school with 4,000 to a school of 200, so that was a big difference, but I like it here, knowing everybody, and everybody knows you, so if you ever need anything, people are always there for you, and it's like a big family. You know, if you're going through a rough time, people know, and they're there for you, they got your back, and unlike a big city, you know, I mean, you don't know anyone. Here, everyone goes through the good times, and then if there's a rough time, you know, everybody fills it together, and everybody's there for each other. You've seen the movie Hoosiers. We're kind of a small town community just like that. No matter what happens, the community comes first. Everybody's willing to do what it takes so that Bar Eve keeps running well. I think our community is something is very rare. You know, it's so close. I think it's a dying, dying thing, dying thing, dying thing, dying thing. With a student population of 56 seniors and 204 students grades 9 through 12, Bar Reeves stands as one of the smallest remaining public schools in Indiana. This is primarily due to a decades-old program enacted by the state legislature. The controversial measure, known as the Indiana School Corporation Reorganization Act of 1959, created what is known as consolidation. The act ordered districts with fewer than 1,000 students to consolidate with neighboring corporations. Bar Reeve itself was a product of this measure when in 1965, Montgomery High and Alfordsville High consolidated. But the Reorganization Act achieved its stated goal. A decade after taking effect, the number of districts in Indiana dropped from 966 to 402. By 2012, Indiana was down to 291 school corporations. It also saw a drop from 776 high schools in 1955 to 405 as of 2014. Those in favor of consolidation claim it improves education, creating a more engaging environment for students and faculty, and more financial resources for things like science labs and equipment. They also say it creates more equitable distribution of school tax dollars. One other clear advantage, a larger talent pool for athletics. Critics of consolidation claim students get a better education with smaller class size and localized attention. They also cite the unfair burden it creates for students who now have to travel long distances to reach a new school. Perhaps the largest criticism involves the loss of identity felt in a community when a school closes its doors for good. In many cases, these schools are the lifeblood of the community and a town may never recover. 
In 2007, the issue received new attention when the state legislature recommended new measures to potentially force all schools with under 2,000 students to consolidate. The measure failed to pass the legislature twice. Another big crowd on hand tonight here at Cavanaugh Court. Where tonight, the Blue Chip Conference lead and the championship most likely on the line as the Vikings welcome South Knox. And the Spartans come into tonight's contest with a 13-5 record. They are ranked number 11 in Class 2A. A parallel storyline to follow tonight. Madison Wagler is 28 points away from tying the Bar Reeve all-time scoring record. He is 29 points away from breaking it. You know, these guys have done a lot here at Bar Reeve the last four years. And being senior night, sometimes you come out on senior night and play like a ball of fire. You can't miss, you can't do anything wrong. And then I've also seen other senior nights where there's just so much build up to the game that you play an atypical game. We're through senior night, let's play basketball. Let's focus on what we need to do. It's just another game. So the focus, I think, is going to be real key. Focus, the name of the game here tonight. And in the pregame locker room, the Vikings are 100% focused. <laughs> <laughs> we at Bar Reeve honored to have Indiana State Senator Eric Bassler here tonight. A proclamation in hand for Coach Hughes and picking up uh, victory number 500 earlier this year. Oh, he's just so deserving. Brian doesn't like all the accolades, but he does need to be recognized for what he's done for Bar Reeve. Tips up and it's going to be controlled by South Knox. The Spartans come out firing. Stafford's going to turn the corner, fire a 15-footer, and he got it. Andrew Scott, eight-footer, got it. Down to Nate Harper, who has just checked into the game, and he's going to roll a layup in. Addison's first shot is short. Logan James with the basketball, kicks it into the corner. Seth Schwartz and Trooper going to fire a three. It rolls in and out, rebounded by Scott. And on the baseline, Chris Whitmer gets himself caught under the rim. And that good start Coach Hughes was begging for early, not going to happen here tonight. The Vikings quickly settle down. Addison going to pull up, 15-footer, got it. Down to Addison. Addison looking for a cutter, can't find one. Duncan going to fire a three, got it. Omari has scored the last five points. Nice inside out there. Addison just turns on Fevers, just overpowers everybody, knocks in an eight-footer. Coach Mark Orr wants a timeout. We need a little more toughness. Nice touch through. Screen for Austin, screen for Austin. South Knox setting up in some full court pressure now. Houchins down on the baseline, related up and in. Stafford with it, down the lane. His shot, got another runner. The Isaiah Stafford, a handful to guard. Houchins 15 footer, got it. South Knox, very efficient to start the second half. We will take opportunities, it's gotta be a good one. Duncan Roy, gonna pull up, 15 footer, got another one. Addison going to spin, lay it in, good. Addison's got it down on the block, says goodbye to Ingstrom. Lay up, good. Get him the ball. Duncan has a shot. Oh, oh I right, by it. Duncan. Lays it up and in. Viking by a dozen. Nice way to finish out the season for these seniors on this home court. And that's the ball game. Mari with an impressive performance tonight. Mari 56, South Knox 41. That's a good win tonight against a quality <coughs> team. Two years. That's two seasons in a row we've not lost on this floor. And that's, that's, a, that's uh, quite an accomplishment for you guys that have been a part of it. Um, but there's so much more. There's so much more ahead of us. Okay? Very good. Everybody up. <laughs> Seniors, every one of you, let's go. Get a call out. Come on, come on. Let's go. 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 Let's
Let's go. Let's go. Make it nice and big. Nice game, Doug. Come on. Come on. Get up there. Let's get up there, man. Finish it off, Fields. Yeah, finish it. <laughs> We speak in German up here or what? <laughs> what fields? Yeah. 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 Hey, good win. 18 2. So let's just be humble and stay hungry. Bari, right. one, two, three. Bari. Right. We are going to uh, Biggins Pizza in Lagodi, and uh, this is kind of an annual event with WRZR Radio. Uh, they always have a kind of a pre-sectional show, and uh, I think at one time all the coaches were there, but the last few years it's just been uh, Lagodi, Bariv, and North Davies. Sectional 63 has been known to be one of the, the best sectionals in the state. Um, because for so many years, Lagodi, North Davies, and Bar Reeve all had really good records. And I think one year, all three of us were ranked in the top five in the state. Uh, so this is a little bit different year with uh, them down a little bit. But um, I can tell you the stress level with me is as high as it's ever been. Because when you're in that position, you just hope that um, players are not hearing and uh, taking things to heart like I hear on a daily basis going into this tournament. To me, this is our biggest game against Ligoti. Uh, some people think North Davies is. I, I personally think Ligoti has always been just because when I came here 23 years ago, Ligoti was a power and we've had some heated battles over the years. Greg Bateman back at Biggins Place on the hill in Lagodi. With the round table behind him, Coach Hughes has one final task before postseason play begins. A perennially tough game against the Bloomfield Cardinals. I'm not good at interviews. <laughs> I'm just saying, you four points. What are you going to feel in that moment? I mean, you, what if something catastrophic would happen tonight, like a torn ACL, and you would never get the oh, no, 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 Welcome to Bloomfield High School, where it is the final game of the 2014-15 regular season, and the Vikings are here tonight to take on the Bloomfield Cardinals. Far East comes into tonight, 19-2, the sectional draw is out, but over the years, and historically, Bloomfield, a very good program, and a tough place to play. Yeah, Mike, every time we come to Bloomfield, it's the last game of the season, always Bloomfield senior night. We'll see you in the center circle. Van Zandt and Cup and Roy going to jump it up here tonight. It takes only one possession for Coach Hughes to spot the Cardinals' defensive game plan. Logan James going to fire a three shot. Awesome. Bloomfield commits two players to defending Addison, forcing the Vikings to hit outside shots. The fourth and going to fire a three. It rolls in and out. Logan James fires another three, it's no good. Duncan Roy gonna fire a three from the corner, it's no good. The Vikings are making a living on the outside. I don't know if that's best for business right now. All we do is settle for a three-point shot because that's the easy way right now. The Cardinals' size advantage, slow pace, and defensive strategy begin to frustrate the Vikings. Wormfield being patient here in the early going, being very deliberate. And Zant with a nice shot. Frederick with the basketball, Van Zant middle of the lane. Locks in a 10-footer. Combs down in the post. Two that he's good. Well, nice Bloomfield. Bloomfield. Duncan down in the post. This shot going to be partially blocked by Van Zandt. Bloomfield a masterful job on the defensive end of the floor. Addison's got a high post now. 
It's not going to be blocked by Van Zandt. Madison Wag or sit down and you had to order up a prescription as to how Bloomfield wanted this game to go. It is going just that way. Madison has not scored in the first half. Barry trails Bloomfield here at halftime. 15 15. First time all year you've been out tough. The first time you've been out tough. It's toughness. Madison, you're right, you're gonna pick up your second and third foul real quick because all the extra stuff. If I was playing us this year, I would guard us just like they're guarding us. There are so many gaps and holes in that defense. I don't have anybody stepping up to drive the ball into the gaps. At the start, way too many threes. Will we have to shoot some threes? Yes, we'll have to shoot some threes. Duncan, I don't need you camping over here or over here. Okay, when I'm like like this, when that ball's right here, this whole area in here is open. You have got to flash up here and demand and want the ball and play out of it. You can have 20 points before the night's over if you just flash in lane and want the basketball. Okay, now as bad as we play, we're down one point. We just got out tough for a half, and we've lost a little composure and we're down one point. This is a man's game tonight. You got a couple 6'6 kids in there and another kid that's pretty strong and they're gonna come after your shot every time you shoot. You either need to make an adjustment and get tougher or somebody else has gotta come in the game. Relax, have composure on the floor, move the basketball and attack the basketball. Knock shots down. And then we have every possession, we've got to play defense. After halftime, the Vikings follow Coach Hughes' instructions to a tee. They knock down shots. Step in the corner, wide open three, bingo. They step up on defense. And we're going to put the pocket, and Bloomfield's going to take it. Connor Porch's group are going to take it back. They get tough. Addison's going to spin through everybody. First of all, it's going to be good. Second of all, it's going to be good. He's going to be fouled. Duncan Roy flashes to the top of the lane. Duncan Roy in the middle of that zone is going to turn and knock in a 12-footer. The Vikings down by 11. Duncan at the free throw line. Duncan going to play it in. Addison makes the free throw. He will break the all-time scoring record. So Addison at the free throw line. Got him. And it is. Addison will have to go to the all-time score at Far East. Fourth and Cooper with one from the corner. Gonna roll out and roll back in. And that's gonna do it. The final tonight, Barry wins it over Bloomfield 40 to 33. And I thought the second half was much better. 22 regular season. That's an outstanding record. And it's not gonna go anywhere. It's always gonna be there. But it means squat when you wake up in the morning. Because it's come Tuesday night around the state of Indiana. Whatever team's the best that night gets to play again. The team is not, doesn't come to play, and then their season's over. And that's how it is from here on out. We won the game, and now it's turning time. Thank you. Fresh off their blue chip conference championship, riding a 14 game win streak and coming off one of their toughest games of the season, Bar Reeve looks prime for postseason play. Just when it seems nothing can slow the Viking train down. Well, we're waking up to a winter weather blast and uh, not only is that a concern for roads in our area, which we'll give you an update on in just a few moments, People have sectional basketball on their mind, and obviously this is going to throw a wrench into our local schedule of sectional games. But what is it about bad weather and sectional basketball? It just seems like every year when it's time for sectional basketball, here comes Mother Nature with a little blast. We've had as many as three inches fall overnight. We could get up to five more inches.
get updates uh, sometime later this morning about the situation when it comes to our sports schedule. And we wish the best of luck to all the teams competing in the IHSAA sectionals. Now our big question is when those sectional games will get underway due to the weather. Again, be safe out there. We've got a lot of snow in the area and more on the way. Hey, it's Hoosier hysteria and winter weather all in Davies County from WAMW. We drew Ligoti, our first game, and if we beat them, we play North Davis, which is the biggest games usually on our schedule during the season, and even bigger uh, after the season during sectional. Us, North Davis, and Ligoti, it's always been the big three of the little Southern Indiana 1A teams. That's why like our sectional is always watched so closely. Usually your team that's going to make the deep run is going to come out of that sectional. So you know, there's, always, there's a lot of tradition them games. Yeah. Uh, a little, little on edge. This time of year is um, a lot more important. And I would like to coach again this year, so we have to win. Welcome to Lagodi High School, where it is round one of the Class 1A Sectional 63 here at Jack Butcher Sports Arena. It is Indiana's very best rivalry kicking off the sectional. You're not going to go out this tunnel and just go on their floor. Someone's going to hand you a certificate that says you're the best team in the sectional. Congratulations. We'll see you in the region. It doesn't work that way. Your job is to want to kick somebody's ass right now. Because I guarantee you there's another team over there that can make their entire season by kicking yours. And you better be hungrier than that team sitting over in that other locker room. You have a great warm up, you get a sweat going, and we'd be ready to play basketball. And we start this turn off on the right foot. Let's go. You gotta have energy and you gotta wanna play. All right, one, two, three. All right. Jack Butcher Sports Arena filling up, people filing in right now. The Bar East student section dressed in neon collars. Neon is the theme. Whatever the records are tonight, you can go ahead and throw them out the window. That's exactly right. I mean, it will be high intensity. And there's gonna be a lot of energy, a lot of emotion. One of these teams, their season's over, and for some players, their careers are over. Lagodi has already made their way out to the floor. And here come the Vikings. Both teams shaking hands. Both teams in the center circle. Officials getting ready to toss the basketball up. Tosses it up. Tips in the air. Controlled by Maurice. Logan James with the basketball. Here come the Vikings. Seth over to Duncan Roy, back to Seth. Seth's going to fire a three from the corner. Bingo. Ball's going to be tapped away. Logan James going to pick it back up, and here come the Vikings. Whitmer going to slice down the lane. Got it. Connor Swartz, the trooper, lays it in. Bell shot going to be blocked. Duncan picks it back up. Barry starts man to man. They go four corners. Just be patient. Chris Cross can get moving. Let's get these post guys moving, son. Logan James for an open three. Got it. Duncan Roy catches, lays it in. Johnny Walker, free throw is good. The left hand layup, no good. There's Duncan to clean up the mess. Barry advances to the second round of the sectional. They knock off Lagodi 47. To 21. Logan, Seth, and Duncan, put it up there. Let's go. Buggy Bowl part two is tonight, round two of the sectional. And Connor lays it in. Logan James, his layup, got it. And oh my, what a play by Seth. 
Dunson going to fire a three to the <laughs> These Vikings have shown they are focused and they are ready. Matt Stahl going to just muscle through everybody. Logan James is being aggressive here tonight. Nice backdoor cut by Jalen Graber. Mari moves on to the sectional championship game. And the Vikings are dominant tonight against North Davies, 63 to 18. Hey, go Vikings. Go Vikings. Go Vikings. Good evening, everybody. It's the championship game of sectional 63, the Bar E Vikings, trying to repeat as sectional champions tonight. Here taking on Vincent Reve in a rematch of a game that took place less than a couple of weeks ago. We are underway in the sectional championship game. Duncan Roy, 15 footer on the baseline, got it. Logan James gonna reach in. Pick it off from behind. His layup, good. Ain't out to Steph. Steph's gonna fire a long three. Bingo! Vikings beginning to pull away a little bit. We gotta play. We gotta play the defensive end and rebound. Pass down near. They're coming. Don't set that down. Get to the corner. Logan's got it in the corner. Fires a three. Bingo! The Vikings are flexing their muscles tonight. Duncan's got it in the corner. He's going to set for three. Switch, 48-19. It's a 29-point lead. Steph Orr, the trooper, bounces it over to Connor. Whitmer, his runner, in the middle of the lane. Got it. Matt Stahl with it. There he is. Move on the baseline. It's 60 to 26. Vikings with a 34-point lead. The route is officially on here tonight. And the pass going to be taken away by Seth Ward to Trooper. Seth left hand layup. What an acrobatic play by Seth the senior. And the Bar E Vikings win sectional 63, 60 to 27. The Vikings grab the trophy. They are the three-peat champions. Madison Wagler's got it. And here come the Vikings. The students have hit the floor. And Barreev, the sectional three-peat champion. What can I say, 60-27, three in a row, we'll take it. Congratulations. And Barreev will move on to the regional on Saturday where they will face Christian Academy in the 10.30 a.m. game number one here at Lagodi. And Christian Academy and Barreev will be followed by Wood Memorial and Orleans. I can't remember a sectional that has been dominated by this kind of margin by a team, one team, um, as much as this one has been this year. Regional Saturday here in the state of Indiana. Nothing changes here. Why would it change? You've been the best team in the area the entire year. You've proved it. In my opinion, you're the best team playing today. But we have to be the best team this morning for 32 minutes. And then you get an opportunity to play again. Bar Eve and Christian Academy of Indiana getting ready to square off in game number one here at the Lagodi Regional. If you are out right now, you need to get to Jack Butcher Sports Arena immediately. This is one of the most anticipated regionals that the Vikings have ever been associated with. Probably the highest level of competition that Bar Eve has ever faced in a regional Saturday. Basketball's up, Christian Academy will have the first possession. Ball's gonna be picked away, and here comes Chris Whitmer out ahead of the pack. Layup, got it, two nothing Barre. Night Dog going down the lane, spin move, layup is good, we're tied at two. Christian Academy with it, down the lane, layup, gonna be good. Aaron Eldridge lays it in, CAI with their first lead. Duncan Roy in the post, little hook shot, got it. 
of a boxing match here. Both teams kind of feeling each other out here in the early going. CAI going to pick it up, and Nick Reed going to lay it in. And ball's going to be on the floor. Here comes Seth Orsetuber, picks it up, bounces it over to Logan James. Way up, guy! Timeout, Christian Academy. Jump up, throw it over. Nice golf at the free throw line. Ball's going to be on the floor. We're going to get a foul on Seth Schwarzenegger. Duncan's got it top of the key. Ethan Duncan going to set for a three. Swish! The fans are fired up here, folks! Whitmer with it. Down to Addison. Addison's going to go around everybody. Way up, got him! He's fouled! Here comes CAI. Night golf goes down. Way up, got it. 6'7", Shelby Rose. So Reed at the free throw line. Whitmer's are going to pull the rug out from under him. Dungeon down to Addison Wagler. Way up, got it! Foul! I tell you what, Christian Academy is unraveling. That was a cheap foul right there. Yeah. I know who won that battle. Addison Wagler landed on top of it, so he'll think twice about doing that again. And Duncan Roy gets on the backside of that trap, lays it up and in, and that's going to do it. Bar Reed with a convincing win over Christian Academy. 49-33, and the Vikings advance to the regional championship game tonight to take on the winner of Wood Memorial and Orleans. Good, hard fought contest. It's what it's supposed to be when you get this far. And all we did this morning is to assure that we get to play another 32 minutes tonight. And you're going to have to be the best team on the floor <coughs> 32 minutes tonight. Addison, nice ball. One, two, three. All right. Tonight, the Barry Vikings aim for repeat regional championship as they take on the Wood Memorial Trojans. And to give you the correct adjective, the Orleans Bulldogs were absolutely shocked this afternoon by Wood Memorial. That's what makes this tournament so great is it's 32 minutes and it doesn't matter what you've done November through February, it matters what you do that night in March. Wood Memorial comes into tonight, a very young ball club, not only with just the one senior in the starting lineup, but one senior on the entire squad. So Coach Josh Thompson with big things to look forward to. Josh had an excellent game plan, kids followed it to a tee. One thing that Brian Hughes is so good about is getting his team ready to play. It does not matter who it is. Let's understand something. There's eight teams left in the state of Indiana. We're playing to be one of four. It makes no difference who's warming up the other end. It doesn't make any difference if you beat them once this year. You better bring the energy. Because our goal is just to win tonight, to be the best team on the floor for 32 minutes so that we can play another week. This is turning time. This is what it's all about. You have no second chances to wake up and think, man, I wish I'd have been a little bit more ready. You're playing to be one of the four teams left in the state. It's our choice on how we handle this opportunity. Here we go. Marie with opening possession. Students bouncing up and down. Logan James opens the contest with the three. Whitmer going to go down the lane, and Whitmer lays it in. Five nothing, Marie. Swartz and Cooper going to set for three from the corner. Bingo! Ethan Dungeon back to Seth. Logan James has it again. Fires a three. Got another one. And the Vikings with a great start here. Vikings by nine. And Chris Whitmer going to reach in and pick one off. Nice, nice bounce pass. pass. Connor Schwartz and Trooper. We got ourselves in a hole here. We're in a pump. But we're fine. Connor Severe, 15 footer. Got it. Fleischer going to fire a three, and he got it. Falls with it, guarded by Chris Whitmer. He's going to step back, fire a long three, and he got it. 7-0 Wood Memorial run. Severe working on Addison. Pull up, shoot a 17-footer. He's going to be fouled. They're going to say Addison hit him after the shot. Whitmer's top of the key. Duncan Roy going to set for a three. Got it. 
Logan James going to set for a three. Get in there. Bingo. Sends Swartz Trooper down the lane. His layup bounces in and good. Nice take right there by the senior. Farreeve all of a sudden stretched this out to a 17-point game. And this one is just about over. An arrow, the starter's coming out. Bear hugs from Coach Brian Hughes. And the Vikings are 34 seconds away. And that's going to do it. The final, Ball Reeve wins at 58 to 38. They repeat as regional champions. Well, I think Connor Severe is playing at the next level. I know he's been recruited by several schools. You know, it'll hurt tonight for that kid, but you know, one day he may be the face where you look at him and go, hey, he's the guy that helped turn it all around at Wood Memorial. And Bari will move on to take on Clay City next week in the semi-state championship game. I would rather be set on top of the mountain than trying to get up the I got kind of body in that first game. You did not talk about that one.
Bar Reeves, fifth trip to the IHSAA semi-state. Both teams shaking hands, going through the greetings. Duncan Roy steps into the center circle. Official stands in. One last bit of instruction to the players. Bounces the ball a few times. Tips up, tap back, Play City grabs it first. Like a high octane heavyweight slugfest, the game immediately takes on a furious pace. And down the lane quickly, shot gonna be blocked by Addison Wagler, and here come the Vikings out on the run. Chris Whitmer layup good, 2-0 Bar Reeves. Sessinger goes down the lane, kicks it back out. Noah Dinker gonna set for a three, and he got it. And Addison now on the short baseline with it. Addison going to work on everybody. His short five-footer is good. 4-3 Vikings lead by a point. Ball Reeve dominates inside. Logan step back, 15-footer, rolls in and out. Addison rebound, layup, got it. Addison gonna go through everybody, lay it in again. Play City lights it up from everywhere else. Gonna fire a long jumper, and it's good by Easton Boo. And a cut by Evan Rogers. Play up, good again. Dinker goes down the lane. His runner is good. Here come the Eels on the run. Easton Boo, and a wild layup spins in and good. Just what we thought it would be. This game has gone up and down the floor. Trevor Singer is gonna set for yet another three. Got it again. Barry having a very hard time guarding Clay City. Dinker's got it again. Brigham Boo, the freshman, going to fire a three. Got it. Clay City has not missed a shot since the first shot of the game. This has been about as perfect of a start offensively that Clay City could have hoped for. Chris Whitmer going to be fouled by Brigham Boo. Trevor Singer, down the lane, runner, got it, 26-17. That's their largest lead of the game. Chris Whitmer's got it, down to Duncan Roy. Duncan, little five-footer, rolls in, 26-21. Here goes Play City, it's the last shot of the half. For Logan Sessinger, kicks it back out, and Boo gonna set for a three, got it. But a disastrous last defensive possession, and Play City leads by eight at halftime, 29-21. Do you believe we can win this game? Do you believe we can win this game? Now, I know we can win this game. And it's not the time to pain. We haven't panicked all year. It doesn't make any difference what, what degree of stage this is. You don't panic because we've only played a half of the game. <coughs> Our half is here to come. Now, we're going to win the game. You're going to win the game. Okay? They're not going to hit that percentage in the second half. But you got to keep fighting, keep playing. Any questions? Well, come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. You got to believe. You got to believe. You got to keep playing. Believe. Bari, one, two, three. Bari. So Bari basketball to begin the second half. Logan James down to Addison right out of the gate. Addison turns on everybody, five-footer, rolls in. The Vikings begin clawing their way back into the game. Bob play, Duncan Roy, layup, got it. Vance Edmondson knew it was coming, was yep. yelling, and it didn't matter. Yep. On the inbound. Dungeon, wide open 15-footer, yep, 35-34, Bari to within one. Logan James has it, just holding it on his hip. And just as the Vikings work to within one shot of tying the game, a play occurs that will forever go down in Viking history as the flop. Logan with it, gonna drive it, spin move. Get down the lane and Logan's gonna be fouled, go to the free throw line and shoot two with 3.7. Oh. And they're going to get a technical foul on Addison Wagner. I don't know what exactly happened right there. I'm not sure either. Kid fell down pretty hard like it was almost 
the flop. Well, they've been kind of going at it back and forth the whole game. This kid needs an Academy Award. This is when Logan James decides to take over. Coach Hughes is giving the official an earful. Logan James sets for a three. Yeah! Curry with their first lead. It's early in the first quarter. Singer with the ball, gets it out. Deeper with it, ball on the floor. Duncan Roy with it. Here comes Duncan, layup, no good. Logan James with it, saves it to Addison. Addison, back to Logan. Logan in the corner for three. Yeah! Oh my God! Evan Rogers going to fire a three. Got it. Just like that. Ray City is tied the game. Logan stop and pop. 15 footer. Yep. 47-45. Let's see if Barry can get one more turnover right here. Dinker gonna fire a three. It's gonna be short. Rebounded by Clay City. They're going to set for another three to take the lead. And got it. 48-47. Evan Rogers, another big three. That's two in a row for him. Whitmer's got it. Back to Logan. Logan stepped back. 15-footer. Got another one. 49-48. We're approaching a minute. Clay City trying to turn the corner. The youngest boo goes to the lane. His way up. Got it. 52-51. And we are at 50 seconds left in the game. The final minute becomes a game of free throws and lead changes. Logan's second free throw. Barry leads again, 53-52. Singer's second free throw is up. Got this one, 54-53. Logan's second free throw. In the air, got it. 55-54, Vikings by one. We're at 15 seconds. Here comes Clay City with the basketball. And they're just going to put it on the floor and drive it. Dinker gonna fire a three with nine seconds. It's gonna be short. Clay City grabs the rebound. No good. It's gonna be a tie-up. And yeah, Logan James gonna come out with it. With 3.1 seconds left, Logan James is gonna go to the free throw line to shoot two. So Logan at the free throw line. Logan's first free throw rolls out. 3.1, Logan with one more. Second one is good. So here comes Clay City. Bar Reed's going to play some full court defense. And Clay City just going to have to fire one. Oh, yeah! Court. No good! And the Vikings! Woo! To Baker's Life Field House! Oh, my goodness. And the Vikings survive today. Wow! Bar Reed. 56, Clay City, 54. Wow, unbelievable. What a performance by the Clay City Eels. Just a fantastic performance. That is a heartbreaking, heartbreaking loss. They had so many seniors on this team. This is a tough way to go. And Barry with eight seniors as well. Both of these teams just played their hearts out.
told you, I told you half my to believe. I told you to believe that we could win. Okay? You're never, ever, ever out of a game. And we showed so much toughness. I would hate to be a senior in that other locker room. Those kids played their ass off. But they got beat by a better team. And you deserve to cut those nets down, and you deserve to make another trip to Indianapolis. Bus ride home is business as usual. second option. <laughs> you should have seen him like two weeks ago. It was a Saturday night. Oh my god. Hey, move. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, oh. Hey, oh, 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 h
There's just uh, a lot of energy flowing right now. We know that these guys probably are not going to get to bed at 10 o'clock, but we want them in their own rooms and kind of settle down and get off their feet and uh, you know, hopefully they get a good night's rest. It's like I told them earlier, you know, this is the biggest game they've ever played in their life and we're here for one reason, and that's to play a game in the morning. And it won't be long, we'll be tipping the ball off. 10.30 is an early start and this is what every coach in the state wants to do is play in this game. And this is our fifth trip up here and uh, I need to win one. We're right here. It's about to wake up in about eight hours. About to go get it. I'm in the wrong room. It's time to rock and roll. You know what's going to happen. You know the feeling you're going to have when you walk out of this locker room. You know the feeling you're going to have when you warm up. How we play the game has not changed the entire year. You got to be able to come in here after the game and know I did everything possible. I played as hard as I could and I cared about my teammate more than I cared about me. It's not a fluke you're here, okay? It is not a fluke you're here. You deserve to be playing in this game. I love this basketball team. We have one game left. Let's lay it on the line and play our ass off. Let's go. Party, one, two, three. Party. two teams that pointed to this rematch all season. This is a Marquette Catholic team that played a lot of big school competition during the season. Simply put, this is one of our favorite days of the year. Time for the lights to go down and starting lineups to be introduced. Both teams now out on the floor, shaking hands, saying hello. Officials moving in. Duncan Roy, Ryan Fazekas. Tip's going to be up, and it's going to be controlled by Marquette. And here come the Blazers. Early on, the game feels much like last season's championship. Reed down the lane. Shot put up and in. 2-0 Blazers here early. Addison working on Reed. Going down, separates a little bit. Step back 10 footer and he got it. Duncan Roy heats up early. Logan over. Duncan's going to set for three from the corner. Got it. And Fazekas going to knock in a three. Duncan Roy going to set for another three. Got it again. He's got eight. Fazekas with it. Rises, fires, knocks in a 15 footer. Logan James going down. Little floater. Got it. Rebounded by Logan James, and here come the Vikings. Chris Whitmer down the lane. Goes around everybody. Layup, got it. 14-7. The Blazers go on a run. Hall's got it. 15-footer in and good. And Smallwood working on Duncan Roy. His layup's good. Tommy Wilson now goes down the lane. His layup is good. The Vikings begin to pull away. Addison spins. Gets caught for just a second. Grabs his own rebound. Lays it up and it in. Seth Swartz, people are going to go down the lane. Layup, got it. Nice move by Seth. Whitmer goes over to Seth in the corner. Seth fires a three. Got it. And that's going to take us a halftime. 
watched the Vikings playing well here in the opening half. Barreve leads Marquette Catholic 34 to 20. It's a tale of two halves. The third quarter becomes a series of missed shots and opportunities. Addison spinning, little five-footer, rolls out. Duncan Roy grabs the rebound, fouled, no call. Here comes Marquette with it. Zekas pull up, 15-footer, it's short. Duncan for another three, this one is going to be short. Zekas going to fire a three, it's short, so it's been a ragged start to the third quarter. Both teams just can't connect. Tension builds as the teams go a combined five and a half minutes without a field goal. Logan going to set for a three, it's no good. Duncan's going to set for a three. It's going to be long. Wilson wants to run. His layup, no good. Chris Whitmer going to go down the lane. His layup, no good. And the pass from Wilson, intended for Reed, is wide. We're looking at four points by each team here in this third quarter. Marquette goes on a run to start the fourth quarter. Connor Schwarzentruber with it on the baseline. His shot going to be blocked. And here comes... Marquette with it, Fazekas down, his layup got it, gosh dang it. Memories of last season's game creep back in. Addison goes through everybody, shot off the glass, no good. Duncan gonna set for a three, no good, rebounded by Fazekas. Duncan Roy, down to Addison. Addison, his shot gonna be blocked, rebounded by Marquette, here comes Peels. On the break, lays it in, fouled, and the Blazers have scored the last six points. That's a nice little 6-0 run here. Then, just when the Vikings need it most, Ethan Dungeon shows up. Addison's got it. Out to Dungeon. Du Ethan Dungeon! With the layup, and Dungeon gonna go with the free throw line. What a great drive by Ethan Dungeon, getting the foul and the basket. Great job by the team. Seth Schwarzentruber takes it from there. Dungeon gonna go down the wing, kick it in the corner. Schwarzentruber gonna fire a three. Yeah! Into the corner. Seth Schwarzentruber. And they're going to count it. Woo! And Seth Schwarzentruber is going to go to the line. Logan James with it again. Logan going to go down the lane. Layup got it. Half opened up. 46-34. Logan out to Whitmer. Down to Duncan Roy. Layup got it. Yeah. Yeah. And the Vikings are 47.5 seconds away from doing it. Whitmer sitting down. Addison sitting down. Duncan Roy going to sit down. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that is a happy bench. Trevor Loniker's free throw is good. <laughs> this day has been a long time in the making. Yes, it has. <laughs> oh, look at those guys. Awesome. What a year. <laughs> Man, I'm on top of the world right now. That's what I'm talking about, Craig. The Vikings have exercised the demons. 14 years in the making in terms of Bar Reeves trips to Indianapolis. Over 50 years in the making in terms of a high school. But Bar Reeves has claimed the 1A Boys Basketball State Championship. 524th career win for Brian Hughes equals his first state championship, and he's standing by with Jeremiah Johnson. Um, it's been a great year, and it's...
Vince. Connor. Hey, Connor. Connor. Hey, 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 I wanted to issue a 509. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Oh, is you a one engine? Five. Oh, oh. No. 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 Hey. We listen to me, both of you. <laughs> Listen here, big hey, man. Hey, Evan, you're a big man. Hey, listen here, big man. Big man, big man. Big man. You're a big man, see? Get it in, big man. <laughs> hey, what's the name, big man?
Dear Lord, thank you for this uh, wonderful day that you've given us. Thank you for a safe ride up here, Lord. I pray that you allow us uh, to play up to our abilities that you've given us. Let us recognize that it's only from you, Lord, that we can do this and play the game we love, Lord. And if it be your will, I ask for come out with the win, Lord. Win or lose, we still praise you. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.